Have you ever seen these giants before? Towering over the horizon, they release thick white clouds. But what exactly are they? Meet the world champion, the Xingli Cooling Tower in China, standing at 225 meters, holds the Guinness World Record as the tallest in the world. But what do they actually do, and why do they have such a strange shape? The answer lies in how they function. Most power plants today, whether thermal or nuclear, require massive cooling systems. And that's exactly what these towers are built for. Without an effective cooling system, a significant amount of energy would be lost, leading to waste and reduced plant efficiency. Now, let's dive into the cooling secret of these towers. Hot water is pumped to the top and sprayed down like rain. As it falls, it meets the rising stream of cool air from below. Through evaporation and heat exchange, the water is cooled down. And that's why we often see white clouds rising from the top of these towers. It's just harmless water vapor, not pollution. This cooling process may seem simple, but behind it are precise physics calculations and sophisticated engineering. Let's explore further in this video. Let's start with a question, why do we need cooling towers? Imagine you've just finished a long run and your body is burning up. What do you do to cool down? That's right sweat and let the wind blow over your skin. Cooling towers work in a similar way. They remove excess heat from the power generation process, just like our bodies release heat through sweating. This process is called evaporative cooling. Let's take a closer look at how this works. First, hot water from the power plant is pumped to the top of the cooling tower. There, it's sprayed into fine mist, creating a large surface area for air to interact with. Next, cool air from outside is drawn into the tower. When this air comes into contact with the hot water, the water begins to evaporate, absorbing heat and cooling down. The warm air, carrying water vapor, is then released from the top of the tower. That's the white clouds we often see. Meanwhile, the cooled water is collected and reused in the power plant. Some cooling towers are equipped with fans to enhance airflow, speeding up the cooling process. However, most large towers rely on natural chimney effects to create convection currents. In short, cooling towers use water evaporation to cool down hot water from power plants. They are a crucial part of power generation ensuring stable and efficient operations. Looking at these cooling towers, don't they remind you of giant trumpets? But why this shape instead of a simple cylindrical design? The answer lies in an interesting mathematical theorem called Gauss's theorem of curvature. This theorem states that if you bend a curved surface without stretching or compressing it, its curvature remains unchanged. This means that curved structures are more resistant to stress and deformation than flat ones. The hyperbolic shape, with its unique curvature, is a perfect example. It helps the tower withstand strong winds and its own weight. The hyperbolic shape also optimizes airflow inside the tower, creating a venturi effect that increases wind speed and improves cooling efficiency. It's similar to how blowing air through a funnel makes the air flow faster. Additionally, the hyperbolic design reduces construction material costs. By using straight lines to form a curved surface, engineers can minimize the amount of concrete and steel needed, saving both money and time. Another interesting feature of cooling tower design is its wide top and narrow base. This enhances the chimney effect creating strong convection currents for better heat dissipation. In short, the hyperbolic shape of cooling towers is a perfect blend of aesthetics, efficiency, and cost effectiveness. It not only improves performance, but also gives these structures a unique architectural beauty. Now, let's step inside a giant cooling tower and see what it looks like. First, you'll notice a vast, humid space with a lot of noise. Where does this sound come from? It's the sound of water falling from the top of the tower, hitting the cooling pads below. These pads are made of special materials 
designed to increase the surface area between water and air, making the cooling process more efficient. Cool air is drawn in from the base of the tower, passes through the cooling pads, and carries warm water vapor out. This continuous process helps maintain stable cooling temperatures. Cooling towers don't just cool water, they also play a vital role in environmental protection. The vapor rising from the top is not smoke but clean water vapor, completely harmless. Some cooling towers are equipped with water collection systems to capture droplets and minimize water loss. Inside these towers, there are also complex monitoring and maintenance systems to ensure safe and efficient operation. Engineers regularly inspect and maintain the components to prevent failures and optimize performance. Building and maintaining cooling towers requires advanced technical expertise. These structures are highly complex but play an essential role in power generation and environmental protection. Many people see the white clouds rising from cooling towers and worrying about pollution. Are they releasing harmful smoke? The answer is no, the white clouds are simply water vapor, formed when hot water evaporates during the cooling process. It's just like steam rising from a pot of boiling water. However, cooling towers do have some environmental impacts, such as water consumption and noise. To minimize these effects, Engineers have designed closed-loop water circulation systems and noise reduction measures. Overall, compared to other cooling methods, cooling towers are still one of the most environmentally friendly solutions. They help conserve energy and reduce pollution, contributing to a greener planet. So far, we've explored wet cooling towers, the most common type today. But did you know that not all cooling towers are the same? There are different types, each with its own advantages and disadvantages. Dry cooling towers don't use water for cooling, instead, they rely on air. They are often used in areas with limited water resources. Meanwhile, hybrid cooling towers combine both wet and dry cooling methods, offering higher efficiency, but at a higher cost. Some power plants, especially nuclear plants near the coast, don't need cooling towers at all. Instead, they use seawater to cool the waste steam, reducing the need for cooling tower infrastructure. The choice of cooling tower type depends on various factors, including climate, water availability, and budget. Each type has its benefits, optimizing cooling efficiency while minimizing environmental impact. Cooling towers aren't just massive structures, they also hold some fascinating secrets. Have you ever wondered if they can't be blown up? How are they demolished? Take a look at how the Germans dismantled a 162 meter tall cooling tower without using explosives. They used a remote controlled excavator to climb the tower and slowly chew away the concrete, a process that took nine months. Interestingly, the unique shape of cooling towers is sometimes compared to the elegance of a hyperbolic. This principle is even applied in architecture to enhance natural ventilation in buildings. Here's another fun fact. Have you ever wondered how hot the water inside a cooling tower can get? The answer hundreds of degrees Celsius. However, this isn't the temperature of the steam escaping from the top. That steam is only about 40 minus 50 degrees Celsius and is mostly clean, evaporated water. Cooling towers may look simple on the outside, but they hold many fascinating secrets. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting science explorations.